What's going on? YouTube Metal Complex here, and today I've got a really interesting knife to talk about and show you guys. This is the Bestec Knives Ascot. A very, very good looking knife. Man, that is a handsome blade. I love Bestec. You guys know if you've been watching for a while, you hear me sing their praises all the time. They just keep, you know, refining and doing better and better and better. And this is very impressive. I'm going to talk all about this guy. But first off, I want to remind you guys and make an announcement. Um, we, uh, I've got two knives that I'm going to give away. You guys know I talk about this all the time, right? Giant Mouse Clyde, Rock and Elmax, and Micarta, and we have the Mazarine Nimrod. Now, previously, I had these. Uh, I had the goal set at 85. I decided to drop the goal down to 80. I want to get the, these knives given away. What are the details to this? Basically, the moment that I hit 80 patrons, I'm going to be opening up a free to enter giveaway for everybody. That's right, not just patrons, literally everybody. I'm currently at 72 patrons. That means I'm only eight away. If you've been enjoying my channel for a long time or you're new, either way, if you'd like to check out my Patreon and see what it's all about, there is a link in the description. As of right now, any new patron who joins will get a shout out. So if you want me to plug your Instagram, you want me to plug your YouTube channel, or you just want me to say something funny or make fun of myself, doesn't matter. I'll say whatever it is you want me to say as long as it's appropriate for YouTube, but you can make that happen um, with uh, even the $1 tier. Now there are tiers that'll get you some cool stickers like my Metal Complex Night Helmet and stuff like that, but that's completely up to you. So if you'd like to help me reach my goal, and support the channel at the same time, and get yourself a free shout out, uh, you can follow that link in my description of my Patreon, have a look around, and then if you decide to join, the support would absolutely mean the world to me. Anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at this beautiful knife. Ugh, getting that all out. I need a break to like take a couple of breaths because I have to talk so fast. <laughs> Overall length of the Ascot coming in at 8.75 inches. I love knives like this that look like they're shorter than they are. I would have taken a look at that and gone, that's an eight and a quarter inch knife. You know, it's a good size knife, but it's not massive, but you get a surprising amount of blade and body um, or blade to handle ratio because of the slender profile. Really like that. What's the uh, blade length? I should probably do that. Tip to scale on the Ascot, gosh, almost four inches. 3.9 inches probably. What's the cutting edge? 3.75 inches of cutting edge, awesome. Uh, let's do some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1. Rat 1 is coming in at 8.6 inches overall. So you can see the Ascot, the very ZT0452-ish-esque uh, Bestec Ascot coming in just a little bit longer there. So at the right one, ZT0452, the big, long, slender one. How about up against the Spyderco uh, PM2? PM2 is coming in at 8.3 inches overall, so again, bigger. How about up against the Benchmade Reptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue? Ritter Hogue coming in at eight inches. You can see there, give you a good perspective on the blade height. Ritter Hogue has a taller blade, but much less overall blade and cutting edge. How about up against the Spider, or um, <laughs> I keep wanting to call us the Spyderco bug out, the Benchmade bug out. Spyderco's bug out is the uh, delicate. Benchmade Bug Out has a very similar blade profile, but just much shorter. So the Bestec Ascot is substantially, give you a good look at those satin grind lines, um, substantially longer blade and cutting edge. And then last but not least, the Spyderco Para 3. Para 3 coming in. By the way, the Bug Out was coming in at seven and a half inches. The Para 3 comes in at seven and a quarter. So how's the action on the Ascot? Well, um, this, uh, for anybody who doesn't know, uh, Bestec knives are made in China. Uh, they are following suit in the current trend of bringing some of the, um, previously, uh, exclusive to high-end knives sort of elements. They're bringing those elements to the budget world, which is awesome. Um, the way that this knife operates and feels is 100% indicative of a much more expensive knife. In fact, if you don't believe me, go back and watch the initial unboxing. This knife really confused me. In fact, let me say this. I've never been more confused by an unboxing before. I, lo I love to consider myself like a connoisseur and I can pick something up and immediately tell you, you know, within 50 to $100 exactly what the, the knife costs. I picked this up and my brain was like 300. No, wait, no. 200. No, wait, is it a budget knife? I don't know. And you know what? The I'll, I'll, t I'll, give, I'll tell you the only um, element that gave it away from me here in a sec, but let me emphasize this. This knife 
feels substantially more expensive than it actually is. Lots of elements creating that for me here, but the action is one of them. The action is extremely smooth. This is obviously a very new knife. I have no doubt that it will eventually become completely false shut. The action is also incredible. It's very crisp and at the same time, very solid. Um, yeah, it, it's absolutely fantastic. This has a wonderful, wonderful action and detent. How much does it weigh? Um, so here's what we're looking at for materials. We're looking at contoured carbon fiber and G10 scales. You can actually see the weaves, how they're sort of layered in there together. It's not a laminate, it's carbon fiber and G10 together. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I prefer this way over the laminate. Um, because you, you actually have more substantial carbon fiber and it's woven in with the G10 in a way that's aesthetically, uh, um, as, is that the right word? Aesthet <laughs> brain fart, aesthetically appealing. It looks really nice, right? But I would imagine it maybe keeps the cost down a little bit. And then you have steel liners that are, so I can show you in here, not milled out. So they are fairly thick steel liners, not milled out. And then of course you do have uh, a nearly nine inch folding knife here. So um, there's a lot of knife here and you're coming in at 4.97 ounces, but let me say at nearly a four inch blade and the profile of the knife, which I always say is just as if not more important than the weight in many cases, it's actually really impressive. The amount of knife that you're getting here for just a hair under five ounces is really impressive. This knife is very easy to carry. It's very pocket friendly for how big it is. I have no problem with that weight. Um, so. Like I was saying, um, materials, we're looking at a combination of carbon fiber and G10 on the handle. It is contoured. Then we're looking at a beautiful satin finished drop point blade. You can see there that sort of rainbow hue. I forget what that's called. Uh, 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 I don't know. It's the uh, it's the effect, that the, the, the prismatic effect that you get on a, a premium um, uh, satin belt finished blade. It looks really nice. That is a very straightforward, handsome blade. You can see there, it's been poked. Somebody from our Apex Pass Run group probably um, uh, poked that. I forget the gentleman's name, and I know him, and he does a great job, and I'm very thankful um, for his service to the knife community. Um, but uh, yeah, that's what that mark is. Here's what I really like about the blade. It is sterile. Bestec left their logos off of it. They have heard from our, you know, Bestec does a great job of listening to the knife community. People like me who have a channel and we're, we're really loud, we may not be accurate, but we're loud. Um, we're echoing, part, part of it's my own thoughts, but I also got these thoughts from people in the community saying, hey, I kind of like how the blade looks when it doesn't have your billboarding all over it. And then more people are like, yeah, you know what? That's right, I really like that. And I'm, I'm kind of jumping on that bandwagon, I agree. It looks nice and they have done that. There's nothing on, <laughs> there's nothing on the blade. It looks really good. So hats off to Best Deck for doing that. On top of that, it is nicely chamfered all the way down up until only this last little area right here um, does it get kind of sharp. But up here, you can see no fingernails, no fingernails right there. That's about where it starts to get a little bit sharp. Not likely you're gonna have your hands up there. You know, it might drag, I don't know, through some abrasive material, it might get a little frictiony there, but no big deal. I would say that's definitely still an A to an A plus uh, blade. Um, no, no issues there. Let's go ahead and get a measurement of blade thickness. Let's take a guess. 145 thousandths is my guess. Pretty close. 150 thousandths is probably what it is. That's understandable. I suppose it could be a little bit thinner, but judging by the edge, yeah, yeah, it gets to a reasonably thin edge. This is going to be your typical, you know, behind the edge. It's probably 20, 24 thousandths or something like that. Wait, is that right? I may not be saying that correctly, guys, but Basically, it feels very similar to, uh, it feels, um, you know, not quite as thin as a PM2, but definitely thinner behind the edge than like an XM18 three and a half inch at a standard uh, thickness. So what does that mean? It means it's gonna handle exactly the type of tasks that it was designed for, cardboard, rope, rubber, wood, zip ties, plastic ties of whatever. I know some people don't like to cut zip, zip ties with their knives, but this is gonna be a great EDC style uh, blade that's going to be strong enough to handle some of the heavy pressure cuts and delicate enough to handle some of your more precision tasks. Fantastic blade. You can see there it's carrying reasonable thickness out to the tip. Plenty of material down here. I wouldn't say it's going to be a master at pry tasks, but you shouldn't be prying with your folding knife. Anyway, it's going to be a plenty durable blade. What's it made out of? It's made out of D2. I have no idea what the Rockwell harvest is on this, um, but if D2 is 
hardened to 61, 62 HRC. Um, it tends to be a performer in the edge retention department. Not a stainless steel, everybody knows about D2 by now. I think that's a fantastic choice. It's one of my favorite steels for a budget knife. Moving down here to the scales, we have wonderfully chamfered, uh, wonder, wonderful chamfering all the way around. No sharp corners anywhere. Really like that. Check out the titanium pivot color there. That is beautiful. We have a little bit of blue and purple going on. Now, to my knowledge, this knife comes in two different configurations. It comes in a standard G10 and D2 configuration and this combination carbon fiber and, G and G10 configuration. I, th I believe the pivot collars are included on all of them, and I think that's a nice touch. Yes, it definitely does add to the overall cost, but it's a really nice touch. It's one of the touches that really confused me. Without that pivot collar, I would say, this is still a really nice knife, but it looks very similar. You know, it's, it's kind of, it would, my, my, my internal, you know, process, my thought process that kind of decides whether or not I think something is more or less expensive would probably have been a lot more accurate um, initially had that pivot collar not been there. It just sort of is a nice contrast with everything. The blade, the contouring of the carbon fiber and G10 scales. I really, really like that. Now, I don't know if there are different colors. This is just the one that came on this guy, but it looks really good. The fitment's great too. Unfortunately, we do have little T6 screws. Let's go ahead and check that. Add time. Uh, this is my Wea bit selector. You guys are very familiar with that. And this is my Wea magnetic driver. I love these things. They are very, very handy. They are also very uh, handily. They are very, they're very handy. They're also very inexpensive. There are links down in the description where you can pick these guys up, as well as links for other amazing EDC items. I also have my list of my favorite budget knives ever down there. And rest assured, this guy um, will. He's going to have a link down there. Let's just go ahead and say that. He's definitely going to have a link. It's, there's also other knives that, you know, I think a lot of people really, really like, just sort of mixed in. But everything's categorized. So if you've got an itch and you need to scratch it, check out my description. There's links down there for everybody. So anyways, you see how this works. Uh, T6 is what we're looking at there. That's going to be my guess. Let's go ahead and try it out. Yeah, those are T6. And then the pivot is a TA. I'm sure a lot of you guys are wondering like, why don't you do this beforehand? Like, shouldn't you know that before you do the review? Um, I don't like to um, build, you know, any, like, cause I have bias against T6 and I don't want to create a negative bias towards a knife before I have my thoughts completed as far as like the rest of the knife goes. And yes, that's a T8 by the way. So I like to do it on camera. Plus it gives me an opportunity to show you guys the tools that I use in every single episode. Anyway. So, unfortunately, some T6 body screws down there. We do have a nicely uh, designed backspacer. For whatever reason, that hole dips in there a little bit. I don't know. Maybe it keeps your lanyard in one place. It keeps things from sliding around. I don't know. It looks like that hole was, was buried a little bit intentionally. Um, I don't have a problem with that. Nice G10 backspace. You can see the, the liners come all the way out to the lips. That's great. Um, we didn't talk about this. This is a dedicated flipper, which is nice in the sense that there's nothing, no deployment mechanism that gets in the cutting path. And also nice because the flipper tab is very unobtrusive. Now it is sort of reverse hook shaped like an XM, but it functions a lot better. It's nicely chamfered off. No um, pokiness or anything like that. And you also have a nice smooth landing area down here. So it's not going to, um, you know, people who like to sit around and fidget with their knives and flip them over and over and over again, um, you can do this endlessly. It's never going to bother your finger. Um, moving over to the other side, it's much the same as this side, given that it is a liner lock, except you have the pocket clip over here. Pocket clip is extremely basic, but I gotta say, I, I like it. It goes right along with the theme of the knife, and it is the one element, excuse me, <clears throat> the one element of the knife that finally gave it away for me. Um, I was, I was very aware that this is a, it's kind of a stamped out pocket clip. It's a very generic pocket clip, and once I saw it, I was like, ah, okay, this definitely is, um, a, uh, a budget knife. What am I looking at here? Are we looking at a little bit of a split there? I think this, maybe that's on purpose. You see that little split there? I hadn't noticed that. Um, it doesn't look like a crack. It looks like it might be on purpose. And I don't know why that would be like that, but I don't know, whatever, it's there. In any case, the pocket clip is actually what gave it away for me. Um, so there's nothing wrong with that. It, uh, you know, that keeps the cost down. If they were to do a sculpted titanium clip, well, add 20, $30 to the price, most likely. The clip is great. It carries the knife about mm, right here, and then it's got this little dip right here. So make, pulling it in and out of your pants is no problem. In fact, 
It's very easy. There's enough of a rise at the bill to get it over generic pant material, but not so much that you risk sort of ripping it off the side. I do not know if this is a free spinning pivot or not. Um, if it is, then you're gonna need two T8 drivers and sort of hold one side. Because of modern builds, I'm left to assume that it might, I mean, I'm just guessing, it, it probably isn't, but if it is, it's not really that big of a deal. There are minimal parts on this knife all the way around, so it should be pretty easy in terms of disassembly. Um, this is a very, very well-made knife. You can see here, we are coming in perfectly centered. Well, here, let me give you a better view of that. We are coming in perfectly centered, and we're coming in a nice 30% uh, on the lockup. There is no blade play at all. That is the case with every best deck that I've ever handled. The only thing that I don't like about the construction is the T6 screws, but it's not that big of a deal if you're careful and you don't wrench on things and you don't try to add red Loctite or even blue Loctite to the handle screws and then take it apart later, you're not going to have any issues with those screws. Not that big of a deal. There is one little flaw in this knife, and that's that because of the blade thickness and the profile of the handle, you know, what I, what I think of here when I look at this is sort of Shirogorov or Sinkovich mixed with ZT0452 mixed with um, the new um, uh, Holt uh, Spectre V3. But it's sort of a larger version of that, you know, that, that's kind of what I'm getting here. Now, when you have that setup and you have a, not a thick blade, but a reasonably thick blade, and the scales are spaced apart, to get that blade to fit, you know, so nicely inside of the handles, because the blade height is roughly the same height as the body, sometimes what you end up with, and it's the case with many similar builds. In fact, I believe some of the builds that I actually just mentioned as a comparison had this same issue. Part of the blade back here can actually be touched by your finger. You really have to try to touch it. I don't know what situation you'd be in where you'd be using the knife and digging your fingers into there, but it's only the first, like, it's not even, a, it's like literally an eighth of an inch where I can touch that. Maybe. Maybe, uh, now let's call it a, the first quarter of an inch I can touch that uh, at best because some people's fingers are going to be thicker than mine and some people are going to be thinner. So the first quarter inch I can touch it, that's it though. It's still buried enough in there that I really don't think you're going to have an issue with that in normal use. Um, but I wanted to point it out just so you guys know. So final uh, verdict on this guy. What are my thoughts? Um, this is one of the very best folding knives I've ever handled under 100 bucks. I am so impressed by this. And some people are not going to like a straightforward, boring aesthetic. But com the combination of the ergonomics, which, by the way, are just excellent. No hotspot from the pocket clip jimping up here. This feels like an extension of my hand. There's some freedom in the handle despite it having a flipper tab, which is doubling as a fantastic finger guard given the curvature of it, which is why Rick Hinderer does his flipper tabs like that. This is just an awesome knife. It's running on bearings. Um, it also has garage stops, which is great. I always like a stop pin that functions like that. Lots of strength and rigidity there. This is a great knife. Coming in, the carbon fiber and G10 combination version coming in at about $88, roughly. Yeah, I'm on board with that. The build quality is there. It's great. A lot of people are like, oh, it's too expensive. It's in the budget category. You're getting a lot of extra refinement with this knife. The contouring, the carbon fiber, the titanium pivot color, I believe that's titanium. The fantastic blade, the excess cutting edge that you um, get. I mean, this is just an awesome knife. It's very, very well designed. And the little tiny things that bother me are, are not enough for me to say, nah, you know, I don't know, be careful. It's kind of... No, this is a knife that I can literally recommend to anybody. If you if you want to experience a lot of what the higher end of the knife world has to offer, but you're limited to less than $100 in your budget, all day, definitely, this is a fantastic example of a, of a knife that is, I'm not going to say it's a budget knife, I'm going to say it's less expensive um, than a lot of your higher end knives, um, but exhibits a lot of the same qualities. The G10 version, I believe, is even less. I will have links to both of these versions down in the description, but this is a fantastic knife. Best deck once again, knocking it out of the park. I love it. Guys, that's going to be pretty much it for today's review. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on this metal complex logo right here and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching everybody and have a great day.